Well, hello, friends and neighbors. John, your whiskey neighbor here, and welcome down to the Whiskey Nook. It uh, is coming out on a Saturday, more on that later, so I'm going to keep talking about scotch and even some sherried scotch for at least a couple of videos. Uh, this is the big scotch. By that, I mean I'm going to talk about a couple of cast strength bottles. Mostly, I'm going to review this uh, Old Perth cask strength, which I, I'm not that far into, but I've got a couple of thoughts. And then I'll give it a quick comparison with the Glen Goyne. I think that's batch five. Uh, so this will be, you know, if you've got a little bit of uh, scotch or even a bit of sherry or cask string scotch, why don't you pour a little bit? And when we come back, we'll talk about Old Perth blended malt cask strength scotch. Three, four. As I, uh, I said in the intro, we're, you know, we're uh, thanks for joining me or staying with me. Um, we're going to talk a bit about this Old Perth. Now, this is the new bottling. Um, where's the box? I thought I had it out here. Got it somewhere. It's a nice box, and and I think it's a sharp-looking new label. Um, this one, you know, blended malt, which means, of course, that it's a uh, not of course. Uh, if you're you know new to Scotch, that just means you know it's still malt, so it's 100% barley. Uh, but the blended malt sell, tells us that it's malts from different distilleries uh, that uh, this group has put together and said, you know, this is how we want. And they released two in my market. The regular, I think it's around 46%, also X sherry And then this one, um, it's, uh, what does it say? Yes, non-chill filtered, no added color. Uh, this one is 58.6%. Let's see what the whiskey itself tells us. Oh, I just want to let you know, I did record this earlier. Uh, I'm hopefully on holiday, uh, you know, visiting some relatives in Ontario. Long overdue visit. Uh, so I thought, why don't I shoot a couple of these, release them on, as usual, uh, and I'll catch up with you guys when I get back. So, scotch. Ah, you know, it is strong, it is uh, rich. I'm right away in that interplay between like a, a red berry fruit and cinnamon. Maybe there's a few other red things going on in there, uh, but it really feels more like currants and berries than it does plum and fig on the nose. It's quite bright. Yeah, I might, I could maybe say I'm getting a light chocolate on the nose, but I really, mostly uh, in that kind of berry, light floral, but then there's alcohol. So it definitely gives you that around 58% nose. Like it singes a little bit. Mm, but there is a little bit of cask in there, a little oak, little tiny bit of chocolate. Let's see how she tastes. Sláinte. I like the way that is in the mouth. You know, it's hot. It's a cask strength scotch. If you uh, don't drink a lot of cask strength, it's going to really burn. Um, but if you take a small sip, you can kind of move it around. And I feel it coats. It's still quite lively. There is heat, of course, from the alcohol. I also think it's rather youthful. Um, so there's some of that youthful. There's some of that alcohol heat. So is that the alcohol saying, you know, pepper, peppercorn? That kind of thing or is that you know coming from the scotch itself it's really tough for me at that kind of percent to tell i like it though it it uh, is lively strong flavor sweet um i've heard other people uh, a friend of mine that wrote online you know he's getting a lot of honeycomb and so that's in my mind uh, whether I would have got honeycomb or whether I would have said, you know, a little bit of vanilla or a sweet barley malt, like I, I would get the sugaring. He's getting a lot of honey, so I could say that. Yeah, a lot of honey. Stays close to that type of red berry that we were talking about, right? So it's it's currant and raspberry maybe because it's slightly tart. Um, and the spicing for me might shift off cinnamon towards a ginger uh, and then... Yes, it's peppered or peppering, but I still almost feel like that's just coming from its core strength as opposed to, you know, it's oaking or it's wood. It just kind of feels that way. 
Nice cask strength. Uh, certainly a value. Uh, many stores in the Edmonton area are carrying on the shelves now for a great price. I picked it up at, I think it was ABC. Uh, it's a part of, the I think, the Prestige Group on 170th, and he had it for $71. Uh, so that is a phenomenal deal. 58% all sherried scotch that tastes like this for that kind of price. Buy that all day long. So it's, it's actually at a four star for me. It's been a while since I've given something that good. So I'm liking it. One of the things I like to do on the channel is just a quick comparison with something else, something I've, I've reviewed before. Uh, and this is uh, Glen Goyne Cast Strength. I think this is batch, oh shoot. Uh, no, it's six. I said five, but I'm wrong. This is match six, it's 59.8%. It's also unchill filtered, natural color, and it's all um, X sherry. No age on it, so also probably young. Let's see how it is on the nose. Now this bottle's been open a long time and maybe that's helped, but it is much richer. By that, I am talking about, instead of light berry and spicy poppy fruit, you know, we're into some some heavier, darker, I'm already getting that hint of rind, hint of fig. Uh, the spicing is like that really cooked cinnamon bun sugar, right? Where it's like kind of that brown sugar, cinnamon, burnt on the edges. Yeah, and I don't recall thinking that this was that rich. I'm just talking more now in comparison on the palate. Sanja. Also, of course, you know what we are, 59% now or something? I mean, it's strong. It is a little less peppery, so maybe there is more of that coming from the casking or spirit here. It is um, truer to that Christmas cake spicing. It's still hot, 59%, um, but richer. I get I get deeper oaks or burnt oaks or edge of nut, uh, little espresso, those kind of notes more than kind of the lively peppery berry, honey sweetness that's over in this bottle. So definitely a, a spicier, thicker, darker dram than the old Perth. Uh, I probably like this Glen going a little more, so I don't think I gave it this high now, but in this comparison, if I'm tossing a four star at this, it's gotta be uh, a little more, four and a quarter, well, it's four plus. <laughs> well, oh, I wanna try this on with water. Well, I've put some water on the old Perth to see, uh, you know, does it shift, does it change with a bit of water on it, let it sit. See what we get. The nose opened in a direction of a little more oak and a little more some of the spices that I was getting in the Glen Goyne. It is a richer nose. It absolutely now brings, like, since I'm getting more cask in with the berry, now I can get a little bit of that leather, a little more chocolate on the nose. Water improved the nose for me on the palate. Slancha. I'm having a hard time talking about the palate with water on it. it uh, it's smoother. Of course, the alcohol has been reduced significantly. But it still is nice and coating, so I appreciate that. So I'm talking about the mouthfeel because, oddly enough, the palate seems to have been wiped out a little bit. Some of that rich or, or, or bright fruiting, like those kind of raspberries, edge of currant that I was getting, really backed off. So now I'm really left with you know, just a uh, relaxed sweetness and some peppering, a nice coating feel, but the flavor has really been knocked down. Try one more sip. Yeah, and now second sip, again, just more about the cask. Uh, by that, I mean more about oak or wood, slight char, more spicing, and I'm not getting what I felt was coming from, well, no, I guess that would be the cask. You know, the, 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 the malt itself, I'm losing a bit of the character of the malt and then the influence of the sherry. So for me, the nose improved with water. It was a more interesting nose, but the palate um, is more relaxed and more enjoyable. Maybe I need to leave it even a little bit longer so some of those sherry notes can come back and then I'll get the both, best of both worlds, perhaps. Thanks for joining me here. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. I'll see you in the next one.